Senator Chambliss. Thanks very much, Madam Chair. And uh, let me just say off the top that with respect to your concern about um, the difference in the uh, uh, risks that participants in the market take, as well as Senator Cochran's question, <clears throat> there is a major difference between one of our farmers and ranchers who is driving from field to field and uh, during the course of that checks the market and wants to make a trade and uh, a major integrated company who is going to be trading hundreds of millions of dollars on contracts and uh, we thought we had uh, made the right kind of changes in Dodd-Frank but frankly we didn't and I'm going to be dropping a bill today that uh, we have worked with industry with CFTC as well as members of this committee on, and I'll be talking to the chairman about it uh, later, that seeks to correct the end-user exemption that uh, needs to be granted, particularly to our, our farmers and ranchers who they deal in a different world than, um, than a major integrated company. So we'll talk more about that later. Um, Mr. McConnelly, the CFTC, uh, CFTC officials have stated in the past that high-frequency trading firms should be required to register so that you know who they are. Now, what information specifically could be gathered from a registration regime that isn't available to the Commission today? Thank you, Senator. Currently, uh, market participants may be registered uh, to the extent that they're an automated trading system or fall within some definition of uh, what people have for high frequency trader, but they might otherwise be registered with the Commission in, in some other capacity. So, uh, in evaluating a new registration regime, we, we want to take into consideration whether we've already captured the types of traders that we're interested in in terms of um, obligations that they might have for information reporting, the level of um, um, responsibility back to the back to the agency. One proposal or suggestion that we have in the concept release is whether uh, we should classify floor traders, uh, use the floor trader definition for high frequency traders. And that's something that uh, we're considering at the staff level with respect to a recommendation back to, the, back to the commission. But if there is a registrant, they'll have enhanced reporting responsibilities um, to the agency. We'll have a better idea about who these um, entities are, and the question uh, is whether we already have that information in a usable form and whether this additional registration um, requirements, the benefits of, of those requirements, fit, otherwise fit within our regulatory structure. So, Mr. Duffy, you just heard that answer, and you talked a little bit about the information that CME Group collects on firms' identities. Um, would registration in and of itself generate more information than what you receive on a trader today? No, it would. No, it would not. I mean, today we have information on every market participant, every order, and every person um, is identified in, with all their activity in CME Group. We tag traders in different two different tags, basically what's called tag 50 for a regular trader. And then for an automatic trading system, we have another tag number for it. We have all that information today that's accessible today to the CFTC. Okay. Um, again, Mr. Duffy, in your testimony, you state, and I quote, many of the recent complaints against high frequency trading in equity markets simply do not apply to the U.S. futures markets. Would you elaborate a little bit on the differences? Thank you, Senator. I'd be happy to. As I said in my testimony, when you enter an order into the CME system, no one knows you entered that order but yourself until it hits our match engine and then the order, the transaction is complete. So in some of the allegations on 60 Minutes and in the, the, the book about Flash Boys, if you recall, the allegation was there was an order sent to a particular entity. Everybody could see it. Then they raced to the 13 other exchanges to trade in front of it and then offered a price a penny higher. Well, that would be literally impossible in our world the way the market structure handles it because we don't, no one knows about that order but us. And also in a vertical uh, silo, which is what we operate in the futures market, people don't have the ability to go outside of our walls to go race customers to different venues to beat them to that trade. As I said, what's critically important, if in fact that is going on in the securities world, that should be punished to whatever 
the law would allow people to punish them for it because that's completely unacceptable. But in our world, we do not see how that's possibly can happen. Now, someone says, well, f could front running happen in your business? It can happen the way they described it in 60 minutes. Now, people can always act nefariously on behalf of a client and do something that we obviously police for on that activity. Well, if that did happen, if you had a front runner, if you don't pick it up on the front end, are you going to pick it up eventually? We will pick it up through patterns. We will pick it up through many different surveillance, surveillance systems, uh, Senator, that we have put in place over the last several years. Um, we feel very comfortable that uh, that type of activity is not going on in our marketplace. Thank you. Thank you very much.